I'm Philip from the private computing team at Google, and I'm going to talk about how to do efficient secure aggregation using distributed point functions and non-colluding servers. Now, in the setting of secure aggregation, we have many clients here, N, and each of them has a vector. So we want a single aggregation server at the center to learn the sum of all the client vectors. Crucially, we don't want the server to learn anything about an individual client's contribution. So that means nothing beyond the sum should be learned. Now, a special case of this secure aggregation setting is when we have one hot vectors from the clients. So that means each of the client's vectors uh, only contains a single non-zero value and everything else is zero. In that case, the output can be seen as a histogram and Depending on the size of the domain of these vectors, it will be sparse or a dense histogram. So in particular, if the number of clients is much less than the domain size, then this histogram will be sparse. Now, in the single server setting, we have some issues with scalability. For example, we require an interactive protocol between the client and each of the servers to compute uh, the sum. Additionally, um, we also require these encryptions that the client sends between uh, himself and the server to be as large as the domain of the vectors. So, and especially for large domain sizes, think 2 to the 32, this becomes impractical. Now, how can we get around these limitations? One approach is, instead of a single server, to use two servers. And here we have the assumption that these two servers do not collude with each other. So that means they could be different organizations and different jurisdictions and so on. Now, the client generate, uh, now generate secret shares of the input and send one of these shares to each of the servers. The servers then can locally aggregate these secret shares while still learning nothing about any client's inputs. And only then, only after aggregating the client shares, the two servers will combine their, their results and this will give the aggregated uh, histogram. The advantage of this approach is that the client has to send only a single message to each server. So it's a fire and forget setting. The message sizes, when using the DPF-based protocol that I'm going to present soon, are logarithmic in the domain size. So that's another advantage over the single server setting. And finally, we can have verifiability, which means that the two servers can verify that the contribution of a single client is indeed a one-hot vector, or for example, comes from a certain domain. Now, how does this work in more detail? detail? We're going to use a technique called distributed point function. And this function is parameterized by two values, alpha and beta. These correspond in the vector setting to the location of the and location and value of the non-zero in the one hot vector of the client. So the client can use alpha and beta and the DPF key generation algorithm to generate two shares, one for each server. These shares can then by the servers be locally expanded to the entire domain. And the result is a secret share of the one, one hot vector of the client. Now, what is crucial here is that neither the keys K0 and K1 nor the expansion reveal anything about alpha and beta. Only after combining the expansion, you know what the one hot vector was, was. So that is already pretty nice. And for small domain sizes, this alone will give us uh, the protocol that we want. So a secure aggregation protocol. One issue here is uh, what we have is if the domain size becomes large because this local evaluation it's necessarily to perform computation as large as the domain size. Now, how can we get around that? Well, remember that I said that in the case of our large domain size, the histogram will usually be sparse. So that means that we don't even need to expand to the whole histogram domain size because most of the values will actually be zero. Now, one nice thing that DPFs allow us to do is uh, specify a hierarchy of the keys. So that means instead of a in single index alpha, we now have a list of indexes that each are prefixes of each other. In addition, we for each of those prefixes, we also have a value at the client, but those could also be all the same values, all ones. So now 
in the evaluation phase, the servers first evaluate on the first prefix. And this, after combining all the client shares, gives them a histogram of the prefix domain. Now they can identify all the non-zero buckets in this prefix domain and only continue, can continue evaluation under these uh, non-zero prefixes. So this saves, in the end, a lot of computation times, especially for large domains. So after doing that for all of the hierarchy levels specified at the beginning, we again get the sparse histogram uh, over the entire domain size. So we don't lose any information. The only thing that we gain here is uh, improved computation. Now, we have an implementation of distributed point functions and in particular of incremental distributed point functions. And you can find it here on GitHub. It's written in C++ and the goal for creating this library was really to have high performance, but also have the flexibility to allow for different use cases. And one example of such flexibility is that we allow different value types. So you can secure share bits, integers, prime field elements, or even tuples of these things. And uh, additionally, uh, there's a very flexible way of uh, specifying these hierarchies over which you want to evaluate. So we're looking for users. So if you want to, if you think this is a good use case and you can make use of these two server secure aggregation protocols, then feel free to check out the library. And of course, also feel free to open a pull request. So we're always looking for contributors. Thanks. <laughs>